Okay, so we're back and we're going to go ahead and plane this beautiful little piece of wood down that looks like it's going to turn into a great, great looking flute. As you can see, I've got sleeves on now, so the weather has changed and <laughs> I'm cool. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Some gear protection for that. Okay, so the purpose of, of planing it down was to square it up so that it's as perfect, you know, perfectly square as possible and also to get rid of the glue lines off the side of it, which you can tell looks much, much nicer. One thing that I am a little concerned with, which I don't believe is gonna cause a major problem, but uh, I'm just concerned at this point, is how rough these lines are. I mean, it's just, it's like, I don't know, 80 grit sandpaper running my hand down this guy, and usually it'd be very smooth. It's not gonna be a problem, it's just, the texture that I'm dealing with at the moment. It might mean what we have to do with it in the end so that it's nice and, and finely finished. But uh, we're going to go ahead and take it to the next step, which is to round off the edges. As I had mentioned, this is a new uh, shop that we're working in, so I haven't got my ducting and all finished up. I'm having to swap it back from machine to machine, but I'm thinking that I'll have it figured out here in just a couple of days and have everything right as it should be. So whether this flute turns out perfectly or if it's a complete failure, I'm going to finish the video so you guys can see what the process is. One of the things I was concerned with was my planer doing this, but the roundover here did it instead, is the possibility of it throwing a chunk out like this off the end. A lot of times when you come off of the end of the roundover bit, it'll throw a chunk out like that and cause a little bit of disfigurement, but it only did it on the one side. This side's fine, so I'm still in good hopes that it's going to be okay. And there's not a whole lot of flexion, which is my other main concern. Um, this thing flexing might cause a problem when I go to sand it on the lathe. Um, we don't use any tools like knives on our lathes. Uh, I used to back in the days, but uh, today we just use sandpaper. And the whole purpose for the lathe for us is just to be able to sand uh, something that's been made relatively round like this with this roundover bit. Uh, to make it even more round and smooth and, and basically get all the, the uh, grind marks off and, and make it more perfectly round. So uh, there is one last little thing I'm going to round the head of it here off. And then we'll uh, take it over there and lay it down the rest of the way. This block here allows me to put the, the head or the mouthpiece area of the flute into my roundover bit, which will make the mouthpiece a little more round and hopefully knock out some of those ugly gouges there that we have that it threw out in the first place. Hopefully it doesn't cause a bigger problem. Let's see what happens. Not too shabby, it actually cleaned it up and made it look a little nicer. So next I'm going to get it prepared to put on the lathe and you can watch me turn it for just a second.
Okay, so it turned out really nice, and my fears of it being rough, they are long gone. It smells kind of interesting, too. It smells like fresh-cut grass, I guess, because it's bamboo. Um, but uh, the design has turned out amazing. When I oil and wax it after we're done, I'm sure it's going to show out uh, a lot nicer than it even does now. Um, having said that, I had to stop the video at one point and go grab some 400 grit sandpaper. We don't normally keep that laying around because it doesn't do well turning on the lathe. Um, but uh, it does a number on hardwood flutes. Softwood flutes, 220, 320 is really about as fine as you can get anything out of on one of those. There's a, a point where the too fine sandpaper like this won't affect them, but on a hardwood flute it really does show the green much, much nicer. I think I'm really happy with this though, and so far, like I say, just turning it, doing the same thing that we normally do with our flutes has worked out fine. I'm going to take it over to my drill press and auger this down, burn some track area into it, some holes, tune it a little bit, and I think it'll be ready to put a temporary block on it until I have time to make a really fancy one. is going to be what it is that makes it show off the best, which it's starting to look like it might be. It's pretty nice. So make sure my oil made it to the bottom. It did. So we'll finish this off a little bit with some of our imitation bear fat. We usually use on all of our flutes. It's made out of tea tree oil, peppermint oil, and sunflower oil. Um, the sunflower oil is kept preserved by the tea tree oil, which also kills bacteria and what have you. And the peppermint oil keeps bugs away, which is pretty nice. So we made just kind of a simple old block for it for right now, and I'm going to make a nice fancy one for it later. Perhaps in another video. But you'll get to see the new block one way or the other. Okay, here is really slick. I mean, just super, super slick. Turned out very beautiful. I'm pleased with it as far as flutes go. It's a superior Native American flute, in my opinion. I 
And for the time being, it's going to get some white leather dose. And this guy here is pretty nice. Let's see, get some kind of clean excess wax out of these holes with. I think that's got it. So you can see the finish on him with our natural finish is still extremely shiny. The bear there and the texture and design and everything is just beautiful. I was concerned originally because it was rough when I ran it through the planer, but this is as slick as glass <laughs> now. Very, very smooth. And uh, I think it sounds pretty good. sounds pretty nice. This is an amazing flute. It's made out of a chop block, you know, butcher block. Really is something else. Bamboo that was layered in different angles and different designs and textures and um, the amount of wood that it took was so minute I could have probably made three or four out of this one chop block just like this. Um, and then the uh, the way the waterfall goes down and the little pattern where the holes are just is amazing. It kind of follows along and the back side here has a very similar but going up just the way we decided to do it. And I like that too because it really gave it a, a full wave effect on the side. This side here you'll notice is about two or three millimeters off on design just a bit but the other side turned out ideal just as perfect as you please. That's due to the size difference in the grain and the cut of the bamboo when it was made. But I'm uh, very, very pleased with it. Even the mouthpiece has a, a really unique look to it here. And a uh, very, very beautiful design. So this is a, uh, a really good build. I'm, I'm pleased with it, excessively pleased with it, exceptionally pleased with it. Anything else that starts with an E, it's good, pleased with it, very happy. Uh, so I think I'm going to decide what kind of chop block or uh, knife or, you know, I'm not sure just yet, maybe a French chef or something, uh, flute totem we're gonna make for him. And then beyond that, we'll have a video, I believe, for that flute block making day. It's not today though. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel. It's the best way to keep up with the newest and latest YouTube videos that we put out here, as well as what we're doing in the workshop, which is usually making flutes 24-7. Uh, we make a lot of flutes and ship them all over the world. I mean, just flutes and flutes and flutes day in and day out. It's like we live, breathe, eat and sleep these things. Uh, Jesse, my wife, said that we should probably put a cop up in here because we spend most of our time in the shop than we do at our home. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this Native American flute making video and please look forward to the next uh, upcoming videos. Of course, one of them being making the flute totem for this flute and so many others that we have planned. And of course, many of them are suggested by viewers like you. That sounds familiar. Uh, anyway, uh, this is Charlie Montotoyella from BlueBearFlutes.com signing off. Happy flute playing, happy flute making. As always, make sure you wear that protective safety equipment and have a great day. Y'all take care.